Hello seniors. Um, I want to do a recording for you to help you navigate the wonderful world of the Common App. Um, primarily students are applying through the Common App depending on which college you are applying to, but the majority of them um, we are finding are, are in your Common Application. So in my Google Classroom you'll find a lot of links for me and many of them include the direct link just to go on to the Common App to create your account and um, essay topics. So uh, for, for today's purposes, I'm just going to go over step by step the profile questions and the things you're going to need to answer so you kind of get a heads up on um, how to answer everything correctly if you're doing this at home or if you just need more assistance while you're at home um, completing the Common App or you can always email me or message me and I can help you that way and I can meet with you in person as well. So I made a, um, like a mock account as if I was a senior applying to college right now. So here's my mock account. And um, the first thing I would tell students to do is to do the actual Common App profile questions. Um, you could always go ahead and add schools to my college list, which I did. I just did a few sample schools for you to see. But um, usually when students meet with me, I add schools into their college list in their Naviance account. So they actually have access to it so that when they get home, they remember which schools to add in their Common App, or you can do this on your own. So it completely depends on whatever you would like to do, um, just based on your own needs. So I just added three popular schools that students, seniors are applying to right here, just to show you for examples. So I added these, but I'm going to spend the bulk of my time showing you the actual general questions. So the profile questions, the first set of questions is just my personal information, right? So it's going to be my first name, my last name, um, and just simple pro. Um, Pronouns. Now, if you'll notice here also, anything with a red star is required. So a lot of students are spending time on questions that they don't know the answers to, but I tell them it's not even required. So if you can skip it, go ahead and skip it. Um, don't stress over the things that aren't required. So focus on the ones with the red stars. So if you scroll down, you can answer all these questions. We all know our own answers to all these things. Um, and then your addresses. So this is going to be just your your home address here, and then um, you're going to have no alternative addresses. I wouldn't think so unless you had a P.O. box, so just no alternative address, and then you just press continue. And then you put in your cell phone number, your phone number, all this, again, all personal information that you guys should all know the answers to. Demographics are all in here as well. So it's all like just if you're making an account with um, just any anything, you're going to put your demographics in there. Again, you're going to notice there's questions in here with no red stars, so you can skip over these if you don't want to answer them. Okay. Um, as we continue, languages next. Um, are you prefer um, number of languages you're proficient in? Most students will put one. Some people have two, maybe three. So just be honest with that if you'd like to. Um, if you speak more than one language at home, go ahead and report that. It's going to ask you your birth country. Okay, a lot of people will choose the United States. If you're outside of the United States, please choose that. Um, number of years you've lived in the United States. This is basically just establishing residency, um, so don't overthink that. And your citizenship status is pretty simple. If you were born in the United States, you're a U.S. citizen. If you were not born in the United States, just um, find the one that applies to you the most. If you need help with this, if you are not a U.S. citizen, but maybe you were born outside the United States, make sure a parent or somebody helps you choose the correct answer. And this is a question so many students are asking me. So Common App Fee Waiver. All students at Bloom Trail or District 206 qualify for an application fee waiver because everybody has free and reduced lunch. So you can say, yes, I qualify. And the reason why you would qualify is because we are all enrolled in the free and reduced lunch program. So you click there. And then you just type in your own name. So I would type in Amy Inca. And then if you want to receive more information. So qualifying for a fee waiver allows you to now partner with Strive for College, which again connects you with just more information, financial aid, college mentorship, and you know lots of different things. You can say yes or no to this. It's completely up to you. And then the next part will be all about your family. Again, this is a part that's causing problems for a lot of students. So again, it's okay to not answer everything, okay? Answer the best way you can. These are red stars you have to answer. Parent, marital status, whether they're married, separated. Just choose whatever pertains to you. Do you have any children? Yes or no? Continue. And then you answer questions about parent one. Again, notice not everything is red star. So if you answer, if you click mom, but you don't want to answer the rest of the questions, that's okay. That's completely fine. But answer it if you know the answers and then parent two, and then it's going to ask you about siblings. Everybody wants to know, why do they need to know so much about me? 
a lot of this pertains to scholarships at colleges. So if you tag that you're from a single parent household or you're the first one in your family to go to college, or if you have multiple siblings going to college, or if they're um, attending a college that you're applying to, these are all triggers for colleges to give you scholarship opportunities or admissions criteria might change depending on what you, you pick. So just be as honest as possible. But again, if you don't know the answer, you can skip it if there's no red star. The next section is about your education. So you're gonna search for Bloom Trail High School right here. Your date of entry, if you've been at Bloom Trail all four years, you enter it August, 2018, okay? Is this a boarding school? No, it's not. Will you graduate? I hope so. I would assume so, right guys? And your graduation date, it's going to be 2022 in May, okay? And then there's no change in the progression. Nobody is graduating early, so most students will, will pick on no change in progression, okay? And if you've attended any other high schools, this is where you would indicate that. So if you were a transfer to Bloom Trail at any point in time, you would enter those number of schools here, and then you add that information. So if you click one, it'll drop, um, drop down to add and find that school, okay? But if you click zero, you can skip it. And this for, um, part here, pertains only to my early college students, my ECI students. So if you're an ECI student, you would enter your information here. If you've ever taken coursework in college, please indicate the number of colleges. And that would be one, that'd be Prairie State. Um, if you are not an ECI student, you've just clicked zero. But if you are ECI, you click one and you search for Prairie State right here. And then you would click dual enrollment with high school. Okay. And then college from, um, from date, you started at August, 2018. And then you will end May 20, um, I'm sorry, August 2021 you started. And then you will end in August or in May 2022, okay? Um, this is not required here, so just leave a blank. You're not earning a degree, so don't click anything if you're ECI. This portion here, many people have questions about. Your graduating class size approximately is about 270, okay? Your rank is none. Your GPA scale is a four and your cumulative GPA you'll find right on that transcript or you can email me and it's also listed in your Navian's account but just for an example I'm gonna put a 4.0 and it's weighted GPA continue current or most recent year courses so you can report so you've you've all taken everybody at Bloom Trail takes six classes um, ECI kids take more, so you just choose how many of your classes you're in, unless you're in eight, maybe you're in five classes, but most students will click six. So I'm going to pretend I'm a, a senior of Bloom Trail, non-ECI student, I'm taking six classes, and there's semester classes. And then you enter the name of those classes here. So I tell students go by period, right? So when you walk into Bloom Trail, your first period class you go to is, you choose it right here, course subject. I'm going to say I'm going to um, pre-calculus, maybe I'm in um, pre-calculus first period, okay? So I would write that name here um, and pre-calc honors maybe. So, and then your course level is an honor. So you're gonna scroll down, you're gonna find honors. And then course schedule one, it's a full year. You're in that for the full year, okay? And then course subject two. What am I in second period? You just add it and you go just go by all your class periods. So you enter that all here. So it shouldn't take you too long um, period by period. And then once you enter them all, you can press continue and it'll ask you about honor. So you can report some or you might not. Uh, basically, you have honor roll and high honor roll. I can send you a list of that if you want to know, unless you know off the top of your head. Really, all they want to know is say I got high honor. They, you just click the grade level. So maybe I got it 9th, 10th, and 11th. I'm just a stellar student. And levels, and it's a school recognition. Okay, and then you can add more if you want to. Continue. And then community-based organization. Most students will say no unless you're in TRIO um, would be the other reason why you would put one here, but most will say no. And then future plans. They want to know what you want to major in. So, you know, I'm a school counselor here, so I'm going to put down psychology. Let's see if psych's on here. Or, oh, school counselor. I'm going to click school counselor. And the highest degree I intend to earn is a master's because that's what you need. Okay. And then it moves on to testing. Okay. So testing, most students are going to click no to both of these answers. Until you receive SAT scores, you do not have a test. And seniors, I've been telling you from the start, 
everything is optional for you. You do not have to report SAT scores for all, almost all colleges. So until you see your SAT score that you took actually today, I'm recording this on the day of testing, when you see that test score, um, then you can actually, um, uh, you can send them if you want to, you can change your mind. Okay, and then activities. Do you have any activities that you wish to report? Um, you can say yes. If you're in a sport or a club, you put the activity name here. Let's say you're an art club, and maybe you, um, if you have a leadership description, or you could just put member. I'm just a member. And then you can just put, and this is not required. See this? You don't have to put anything. Okay. And then any, please describe this activity. It's just an after school club. I'm just doing this briefly. Uh, and I've been in there maybe ninth and 10th grade. Okay. Time, it's during the school year and hours spent. This is guessing, guys. If you meet once a week, you put one. Um, and weeks spent per year, if you're in it every single week of the year, you know, just guess. Maybe about 40, 40 weeks or something for the school year, depending on. Um, there's 52 weeks in a year, so I'm just guessing. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. I tend to participate in the similar, yes, I think that's important to say you want to participate in activities in college. Okay. And the next part here, this is the benefit of adding your colleges ahead of time because it'll tell you, do my colleges require the writing? And all the colleges I put do not require it. Um, some colleges you put will say it is required. So just depending. So for right now, I can safely put, I understand. All my schools don't require it, so I can scroll down. I don't have to put a thing, press continue, and say no, and then no to this one, and then continue, and that skips your writing. But if the college requires it, then you need to enter your writing or your essay. And once I'm done with all this stuff, then you can safely move on. Now, everything should be green check. I didn't fill in everything, but when you do this, it should all be a green check. Then you can click on My Colleges and you can answer the individual college questions. So the one thing that um, all students really have to do, and now on a student screen it would be different because you would have more information um, added in your Common App section, but all schools require a student to submit the Recommenders and FERPA area. And on a student screen when they complete this, there'll be something right here that says Release My authorization. Okay, it's like one little bar click. All I ask students to do is just do that. You click that, you agree to everything, you sign it, you submit it, and then this should turn into a green check for every single school. So you don't have to do a thing in that area for the rest of the time then. So there's nothing left to do after you click and agree to all those things. Okay, so um, and then you just do the individual college questions. Um, each school will have different questions. So like every school asks, when do you intend to start? It's always going to be the fall 2022 and you want rolling admissions. Some have early decisions, some have early action. Um, if you're trying to decide which one it is, you can come through me and I can help you with that. But most of them will be rolling admissions. And then it'll ask you, of course, what do you want to major in? Okay, so I would choose probably the closest would be psychology if I want to be a um, uh, a school counselor, I would think the closest at um, at uh, EIU would be psychology. So we gotta go. Now. They have so many majors, you guys. Here it is. Okay, continue, and then personal information. So you can answer all these. Do Do I have any family members that went there? No. I'm an Illinois resident. Have you ever been dismissed or suspended? No. Have you ever been convicted of a crime? No. So you can answer all these questions. And once these all turn to a green check you're done. You should have a green check here and a green check here, and then you can review and submit your common application. Okay. So once you have green checks, green checks are good. Um, and then again, I'm on a demo account, so I can't do it all in front of you, but when you review and submit and it officially goes through and you follow the steps, you should see like confetti go across your screen. So you know it's submitted and you're hundred percent done. So then when you submit, you need to communicate that with me. Okay, so you would need to link that in your Naviance account. So all students know how to log into Naviance. So I'm going to show you that briefly. So I log into Naviance. So I'm pretending that I'm logged in as a senior. Um, every student is going to live in this area. Colleges I'm applying to as a senior. Okay, because you're a senior and you're applying. And if you met with me, all your colleges will be listed here because I add them for you to help you out. Okay, but these are just some sample schools. But what's most important for me 
is that you click here, match accounts. Okay, because again, I had a demo, I can't do the whole thing. But when you click on match accounts, it'll open up to the Common App. And then you would log in with your email and your password that you created with your Common App. You sign in, it'll ask you to agree to link it. You agree, and then all of a sudden, poof, it opens back up into Naviance. And this bar that's pink here will turn green, which is a good thing. Okay, and once that turns green, you can now tell me that you submitted and linked your accounts by requesting a transcript because a college can't give you an admission decision until you request a transcript. Okay, so you click on your request the transcripts here and it's always going to be initial. It's your only option. You're going to click on like I submitted Eastern today. Done. Request and finish and poof, you're done. That's it. You just told Ms. Inca, you submitted, you need a transcript sent and a fee waiver, and then I do the rest. And then you just wait for your admissions decision. So each time you submit somewhere, you go through there, request the transcript. You can always code through me. If you don't remember the steps, you need more help, we can do that together um, in my office too, if you need help with that. But So that's a summary of how to complete your common application, how to link it in Naviance, and how to request a transcript from me. Um, the only other thing that you would need to know is if you're applying to a college that's not in the Common App, you would just go to the school's website to complete that application, which I can completely help you with. It's not a problem, but it's a pretty step-by-step -step process, very similar to the Common App, personal information, activities, high school info, GPA, and once you submit on there, there's always a fee waiver option. If you don't find it, you can always ask me, and when you submit on there, you have to tell me, so you communicate by going into Naviance and clicking Request a Transcript and you request that transcript to me. Um, and then I will send it off within 24, 48 hours, usually within 24, but depending on the school day. Um, and that's it, you guys. So if you need anything, you can always come by, email me or ask me, but um, otherwise, good luck in applying.